वर्णिवे शरमणीय दर्शन मंदहासुचिराज्नाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्रीगणश्याम महाराज नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माई थ्योर बिलोड घनश्याम महाराज पाथ में कटो लिबरेशन पूजे पाथ गुरु जी ऑल ऑफ यू ड्यूटीज जय स्वामी नारायण एज वी नो सम ऑफ ड्यूटीज लाइफ वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू देयर लाइफ वी कैन लर्न समथिंग फ्रॉम देयर लाइफ सो दैट वी कैन ऑल्सो गेट राजी फॉर प्रपिसिएशन ऑफ महाराज एंड गुरु जी एंड ऑल द संतोष एंड even by that we can even make our life such a pious or such a virtuous like uh, everyone can become happy so many devotees life was uh began from struggle meaning before they become a satsangi they were not a devotee or th- their lives are like a uh, very adverse than the dev- devoted life of devotees on the other hand some devotees born in the satsangi family meaning those who attain satsang by their birth so today we are going to discuss about one of such devotee who like received a birth in a satsang and after that how he cultivated different different divine virtues in his life by association of the santo like Muk- Gopalan Swami, Gunadhidhan Swami, and many other santos. So today we are going to discuss about Sivlal Bai Seth, who was uh, from the Bhutan, and he was also very strong devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And in his childhood, he had got darshan of Maharaj in his human form. Sivlal Bai was born in Bhutan in the summer year eighteen eighty two. so the year in which bhagwan swami himself wrote the shiksha patri so that year silal bai was born in the bota since he was the only son of wealthy father he was brought up with extreme care and affection when silal bai was 15 months old bhagadosi took him to maharaj at garda and maharaj blessed the child by touching his head and said this is the king sidwala he had rendered service to me so bhagwan swami and when he saw this child 15 months old child then maharaj himself recognized him and he said like uh, this is a sidwala uh, who met bhagwan when maharaj was in the nilkantharni farm and he was traveling in the uh, himalayas there two times he met to maharaj and that is why maharaj uh, knew him like uh, after getting my darshan at the time he was a king and right now because of the fruit of getting my darshan he now became a devotee and this child is no one but the king sidwala so in this way maharaj described his glory and after that uh from his very childhood he was very simple and very devoted his father bhagadosi he was also a very strong devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and he was also like a uh, millionaires at the time even when the king of the state required some uh money so he borrowed some money from bhagadosi that was his richness so but from beginning bhagadosi was not uh, bhagadosi's family was not a devotee but when bhagadosi was merely a child at that time he was studying in a school and at that time vyapkan and swami according to bhagwan's uh, like bhagwan's command he traveling one place to another and when he arrived in bhutan and then Hamir Khachar's dearest mare 
fell down and died so at the time the uh, amir khachar was like crying too much and at the time vyapkan and some ask how uh, why is this commotion happened then uh, someone explained to swami like uh, our king of the bota amir khachar he had too much affection for his mare and she died so he was crying then swami himself like uh, pick up one of mosquito from the air and put its jew inside the mare so the horse came uh, alive and that's why the hamir khachar and his family they become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan and after that many other devotees became but this bhagadosi he was studying in a school and he uh, also knew this incident because of one of his friend was from this darbar family meaning from the family of hamir khachar so bhagadosi also knew this incident and he also became chanting bhagwan's holy name swami narayan swami narayan swami narayan the whole day so not only that but his attitude also changed towards the spirituality and because of that his father bhai chand bhai said he was from a jain religion and that's why uh he along with his family they opposed for bagadosi's devotion and that's why once bagadosi without asking anyone in the in the house he himself uh stole some like a uh, ration for maharaj and santo and immediately without asking or without anyone can see him uh, he Im- immediately brought all those ration for maharaj and santo's use when maharaj uh when bagadosi he was offering this stuff to to maharaj and requested him for like uh using this stuff for using Fu, uh, making food for our santo and bhagwan so at the time maharaj himself refused by saying like uh, you have stolen this stuff from your house and that's why we cannot take this so go back to your house ask for forgiveness for your father and other family members and then if they allow you to take this ration for us then and then we can accept so even the bagadosi was crying but still maharaj said no you should go back to your home so in this way he back home and when bhai chand bhai uh listen this from his own son like sorry for stolen this uh, stealing this ration and the other stuff for bhagwan and santo and maharaj send him return because at that time many other babas and many other vairagis they even ask for such kind of like a uh, ration and money on and on the other hand this swami narayan santo and bhagwan himself refused to take this ration and the other things so by this virtuous behavior of santos and maharaj uh, bhai chand bhai also became a satsangi not only that but bhagadosi also become he was already become a satsangi but now he was allowed in his house in his family to worship bhagwan so from that days the family uh, became a devotees of bhagwan swami nar and sivlal said get this satsang by his birth so when sivlal bhai was like as he grew up uh, in where uh, with very simple and devoted nature but still when he was like a uh, 10 years old at the time he once visited with his family the vartal and at the time maharaj was not there on this earth because he disappeared from his human body and he passed away to aksardham so at the time uh, in place of maharaj maharaj installed acharyas so uh, 10 years old sivlal by he was requesting maharaj uh, acharya maharaj raghuvir ji maharaj like uh, please make me a sadhu i want to renounce my home and family i want to become a sadhu so please initiate me into sadhu fold so at the time acharya knew him like this is a only son of a wealthy father 
so it is not proper to make him a sadhu and so he told the boy uh, you are still very young and what's more you are an only son of your father and also your father is a prominent businessman of the bhavnagar state and so it is better you stay as a householder and serve god so his request his request was refused by acharya sri and at the time um only because of his father's insist uh, insistence and acharya's insistence he lived in a house meaning he remained as a householder but still his mind always stick to the form of bhagwan his mind it totally detached from the from the business of his father as well as uh, property and wealth and prosperity and luxuries he only lives very very simple and humble life so according to that situation he married but he remain aloof from the social uh, other activities and he mostly passes time in the association with Go- gunaditanand swami and gopalan swami and many other sadhus many times his family amidst the convenience of much luxury and comfort uh sometimes along with his family and sometimes he himself meaning only alone uh, regularly visited vartal gadda junagadh and many other places to attend the satsang celebrations or samaya or functions and on the other hand gunatan and swami would also visit botad on his way from junagadh to vartal every year swami stay there in botad for several days especially one month every year and there sivlal bai said he was also taking uh, like advantage of listening swami's vato and in this way his spirituality grew up more and more and on the other hand every year sivlal had also took a vow to spend one month in the company of gunaditan and swami in junagadh so every year for one month sivlal bai uh without fail he reached to junagar and stay there for a month and listen swami's talks in this way he such some grew up and even his uh, like desire towards the bhagwan desire to uh, meditate upon the form of bhagwan increased day by day and even he even uh, filled himself with the wisdom of satsang from gunatitan and swami even though he was a householder though his contact and association with swami uh, had attained the state of brahm rup so even though he was living in the house but as he was totally de- detached from worldly affairs and that's why his mind engrows in the form of bhagwan and because of that he attained the state of brahm rup and he was aloof from material attachment and focuses only on the devotion to god once there was a family occasion how he, how he was like totally detached from his worldly and family affairs once there was a family occasion and for that many relatives came to botar after the occasion uh, most of the relatives they returned their home but sivlal's sister in law stay in sivlal's house sivlal's nature was such that he never talked to anyone unless un, uh, unless necessary for he was always engrossed in his devotion and service to god so this is what sivlal's nature or his habit like only speak very little i mean only necessary he can speak with the other family members even with his father and mother and then one day he was lost in thought of bhagwan while he was eating so that's what he was doing meaning according to bhagwan's agnya in the vachanamrut he was uh, trying to remembering bhagwan's form 
while eating while walking while like drinking while sitting while even sleeping so his mind remained focused on the form of bhagwan while he was worshiping bhagwan while he was doing puja in the morning and that's why he was uh, according to his practice he was like uh, meditating upon the form of bhagwan while eating he was thinking about bhagwan's form while eating and that's why the sweet item was served to him by his sister in law sivlal sister in law stay in his house for last uh, 2 to 3 months but sivlal was totally unaware of this and every day even she was serving sivlal but still sivlal was totally unaware of this and to this uh she was like uh serving little more than uh sivlal said no no it's enough and while saying he was looking up and when he looked up then he found his sister in law and then he was surprised and asked when did you come here so uh even the others surprised by the question and his sister in law immediately disappeared into the kitchen and uh, revealed to the other family uh, female members of the family by saying i have been here for 2 to 3 months and have served every day sivlal food but he asked such a question so the other family members they explained to her like he he was totally remain engrossed in the bhagwan's form and devotion and that's why he was uh, he, he might be unaware of your presence here in a house so he was remaining engrossed in bhagwan's form even while eating now while even walking he was also remain in bhagwan's form he was even thinking for bhagwan while walking so a similar incident occurred in public Sivlal's daily routine took him from home to office or home to mandir and mandir mandir to office or office to back uh, from office to mandir and mandir to home so even en route he was never distracted by the surroundings in fact one old building had been demolished and a new one built in its place 6 months passed after completing the construction of this building one day as he was walking on the road his usual route and he sneezed and looked up and noticed a new building so he surprised and he asked the people uh, when was this built so everyone laughed in amazement at sivlal's focus only on god and they can uh, and continue on their way but didn't give any answer and even they laughed why because everyone knew like uh from last 6 months this building was uh, had completed and still every day sivlal was walking on the same street and still he didn't found that the building was constructed so that's what uh, sivlal by not focusing on any other things or any other way besides the bhagwan's form and through his association with gunadidan and swami he developed a strong liking for listening to spiritual discourses in fact it it became like an addiction for him garuda is very near to botad and that's why bagadosi and his family along with like bagados uh, along with sivlal and all his uh, sivlal's uncle adadosi and many other they frequently visited gadda so once bagadosi adadosi meaning sivlal's uncle and sivlal they were going to gadda from botad they were on a bullock cart so at the time on the both of side uh, both side of the roads they uh, adadosi and bagadosi they were like 
likely yield of each field land quality and other issues meaning they were discussing about these things like uh, this field uh, it has very like uh, fertile land and that's why uh, it has a good crop and because of that the owner of the farm will get this much amount of money in this way they were discussing about this even though they, the farms or uh, the crops or nothing of them still they were discussing in this way on the other hand sivlal uh, sivlal bhai he was like chanting bhagwan's holy name on his bed and uh, uh and he was like closing his eyes and didn't uh talk anything meaning he was remembering bhagwan why because he, they were going to do darshan of bhagwan and while going for mandir or for having darshan of bhagwan or satpurush or any sant or devotees one should chant bhagwan's holy name instead of talking any other matters so sivlal bhai uh, was chanting bhagwan's holy name on his rosary and pass his time when the garuda was near then he opened his eyes and he asked his father father what did you do during this journey then bhagado sri replied like oh we just talk about the farms that passed then sivlal bhai asked again with polite manner like really and how much did you earn from your tax as you are a businessman so you definitely calculate each and every time like uh, how much you will earn from this business or how much you can uh, loss from this business in this way you are thinking in this way and calculating in your mind so now as you are talking throughout the way about these lands and farms and crops and income of their farmers and others so how did you earn from your talking as you are a senior and experienced businessman so please tell me how much like pro- profitable talks of your and on the other hand i have chanted bhagwan's holy name so compare our both of us business like your business of talking and my business of chanting bhagwan's name who is more profitable then uh, bhagado sri understood his mistake and he understood the glory of sivlal bhai and uh, he also like bhagado sri also experienced his son's spiritual outlook from this incident and also he realized his mistake and resolved to change his nature to talking worldly talks so this is another incident and another incident when our sivlal went for darshan he never went empty handed he always uh, he would always have something to offer and in those day as there were no printing presses so a scribe would write a book for a fee of around 60 rupees like a book of vachanamrita or bhakta chintamani or such other books if you want to get a copy then you have to hire a scribe and you also need uh, an original copy and then he will write the book from the original copy and then you have to pay for that at that uh, those days 60 rupees per book that was too much not an ordinary person can afford that much amount for getting a copy of a book so sivlal had paid for many copies of the vachanamrut and uh, bhakta chintamani and many other books and even after getting those copies he offered them to the santo for their use so in this way he did this kind of seva of santo and not only that but sivlal had also financed the making of the murti of hari krishna maharaj in garuda because those uh, that murti of hari krishna maharaj which was installed in garuda that was not installed by bhagwan himself but after bhagwan's passing away to aksardham goparanand swami 
had installed this uh, murti of Hare Krishna Maharaj in every mandir besides uh, except the Vartal mandir because in Vartal Bhagwan himself installed the form of Hare Krishna Maharaj. On the other hand, the other mandirs didn't have Hare Krishna Maharaj's form at the time of Bhagwan. And Gopanand Swami, after Maharaj passing away to Aksadam for establishing a true Pasna of one form, meaning true Pasna of Bhagwan Swaminar, himself installed Hare Krishna Maharaj Murti in each mandir, meaning uh, in Amdavad, in Bhuj, in Garda, Dolera, in Junagar. So, for the installation of this murti in Garuda, even um, Silal Bhai had too much like uh, utensils, sanctified utensils, or we can say vessels used by Bhagwan, and those utensils uh, used for making this Hare Krishna Maharaj murti, because those murti are made from five kind of different uh, metals like gold, silver, and many other. So in this way. He used his prasadina vasans for making this murti. And also he had like uh, sponsor his money for uh, celebrating the grand festival for that. And also Raghuji Maharaj then came to perform the idol installation ceremony with Gopalan and Swami and these occasions were celebrated on a grand scale and was sponsored by Sivlal. He also stayed there for uh, in Garuda for many days. In addition to his financial contribution, he also served physically. That's the important thing. Because one who can spend his money cannot spend his time. But here, in his case of Sivlal Bhai, he even spent his money as well as his time and his physical ability. Even he day and night physically served the santos and the devotees. In this way, he spent many months in Garuda prior and after the celebration. So as soon as the idols and installation ceremonies were over, Sivlal went to Junagar for darshan of Gunajita and Swami. At that time, even Sivlal had honored uh, Raghuji Maharaj's uh, reception in Bhavnagar. Bhavnagar uh, was the capital of that uh, of the state in which Garuda was also situated. So Santos and devotees they decided to uh, honor Raghuji Maharaj in the capital of the state. So. Uh, Sivlal Bhai also sponsored the reception ceremony in uh, Bhavnagar state. So he was also become a sponsor for that. And after completing this festival celebration, Sivlal visited Junagar. And there, once Swami was determined to uh, remove even the slightest peak of fault from Sivlal's heart, why? Because Sivlal was a true devotee and he was like inclined to only please Bhagwan, Santo and devotees and still if something like uh, vices or something like any of trash of vice remain in his heart, that's not good for him. And that's why Gunatan and Swami, he was omnisciently knew everything about Sivlal's heart. And that's why for removing the faults from Sivlal's heart, Swami said to Sivlal, Sivlal, you feel in your mind that because you sponsor for the idol installation in Garuda and Raghuirji Maharaj's reception in Bhavnagar, you have done a great thing, what you are thinking in your mind. But in reality, but when I look at your, it, uh, when I look, your, look at your heart, I see that only half of satsang remains in your heart. So, by this incident, we can uh, even Sivlal immediately agreed with Swami, and he, while folding his hands, he says, "Yes, Maharaj." And he give respect to Gunajdan and Swami. 
and when gunadithanand swami saw this like his intense desire to correct his mistakes and that's why swami said to sivlal sivlal if you listen continuously to spiritual discourses from me for two months then your jeev will regain its previous state of spiritual attachment with god so in this incident we can learn that uh, sivlal bai had too much affection and too much respect for santo not only that but even in his answer while folding he said yes maharaj meaning he saw a form of bhagwan in a form of sant he was not looking like this is a sant he was looking like this is bhagwan himself he is talking to me he is calling me he is pointing out my mistake so in this way sivlal's vision was different from ours if we can cultivate this vision in our life then we can also experience the divinity or we can say even at least we can experience uh, in our life that to whom we so uh, we can see the form of bhagwan that person meaning that sant can tell us everything whatever he found fault in our life then definitely he will tell us like you are wrong in this way otherwise if we cannot cultivate this vision like we cannot uh, have a glory of sant as per the glory of bhagwan then we can never receive uh, our fault from a sant meaning not out whenever we ask to any particular sant then definitely that sant or sadguru can uh, narrate us our faults but himself will never tell us what's our faults and many over such like very minor faults remain in our heart and we can never watch them without the help of sadguru and for that this is the very easy and very useful method for us and i think it it is very necessary so while realizing bhagwan in the form of sant if we give respect to them and we understood uh, we understand that much glory of our sadguru in the form of puja guruji then our puja guruji just as sivlal here received his faults from gunadithan and swami even with some harsh word and in the same way if we kept if we we have the same uh, like uh, emotion for our puja guruji then he is also can tell us everything like our faults our mistakes and everything so this incident revealed the care that gunadhan swami had for sivlal's spiritual well beings so now we can understand by this incident like uh, how uh, sivlal by said attained that much satsang wisdom as well as how he attained like that much attachment with bhagwan and spirituality and not for and totally detach uh, and detachment from the worldly affairs because he had too much affection he has too much attachment with gunadhan swami and then and then he can attain that uh, his spirituality or he can maintain his spirituality even by the association of the sadguru one can attain the state of like higher state of spirituality but not for permanent for maintaining that level of spirituality one must have association till the end of one's life so once gunadhan's uh, another incident also revealed the same like humbleness of uh, sivlal bai said once gunadhan swami was delivering a discourse on how the observance of niyams can earn the blessings of maharaj and many other different topics the whole assembly was listening uh, attentively and sin- silently sivlal was also in the assembly but due to some illness he was not uh, feeling good in his mouth and uh, for that meaning which he attempted to neutralize by sucking a few pieces of betel nut so suddenly a cracking noise came from sivlal's mouth as he was chewing a, a small pieces of 
battle nuts so noise came from sibla's mouth and as it resounded through the atmosphere so swami command commented who is forsake forsaking the taste of such divine spiritual nectar in the form of these talks these discourses and chewing a bone so even though sibla was like a millionaire son and still without like any hesitation or without uh uh without understanding anything wrong he immediately got up and went outside and washed his mouth clean and then he came back and he resolved never to take a uh, battle in his life again not only that but he even folded his ha- his hands and came back and uh did the done words to gunadhan swami as well as to the other devotees meaning to the sabha and then he asked for forgiveness for disturbing the whole assembly and he sat down again so that was his humbleness and one who has such kind of humbleness the sadguru or the sant definitely tell him about his faults otherwise one who has not acquired this like humbleness then no one can tell him about his faults Once Gunajan and Swami resting, so finding a little free time, Sivala went to the market of Junagar. There, as he was a businessman by his nature, by his uh, like, by his occupation, so he definitely think for doing some business. So he he getting a uh, free time, even though he was staying in Junagar and for. Uh, for the association and listening katha from gunajitan swami still he getting some free time and he was coming out from the mandir and he brought some uh brought and sold some gold and in between he like uh made a handsome profit of 150 rupees those days 150 rupees worth of like uh 15000 rupees or uh 15000 dollars today so that much profit he earned within an hour or two so by the time he returned to the mandir and at the time swami had already started his discourse and seeing that sibular was late so immediately swami asked why he was late today then sibular told swami swami today i have earned 150 rupees to sponsor maharaj and santos thal for tomorrow then swami was not impressed then he asked silal you brought some uh, you brought and sold some gold but you ever thought of buying and selling heaps of dust then silal said no swami then swami explained to him like in my mind in the mind of great sadhu everything is dust compared to the uh, everything is dust in comparison to the murti of maharaj meaning besides bhagwan everything is like a dust if you give me 150 rupees or if you give me 1000 rupees or 15000 rupees or whatever you give me but in the vision of great sadhu in the mind of great sadhu there is nothing but the dust but instead forsaking uh, and by forsaking these uh, sermons about bhagwan what profit have you gained you have spent your one month from your time and uh, you have spent here and uh, you stay here for listening katha and you miss the katha then what's the profit you gain because uh the rest of the year meaning rest of the time in the year you did the same business and now you did the same business here so what's different between uh, your staying at house and your staying here in mandir for a month so what you did is not good so in this way gunadhan swami can tell him everything even in sabha and yet Sivala never feel anything like Swami did wrong. Swami, if Swami wanted to uh, 
uh, tell me my faults then he should like tell me in person no he never think anything he said okay that's my mistake i'll never do it again one day sular was at home meditating upon bhagwan's divine form in the early morning and at the time somebody spilled a pot of ghee while going downstairs and the ghee spread down the stairs and there was commotion in the house so hearing the noise pagadosi came running he saw the mess and the wasted ghee and was upset because ghee was also costly so he went up to uh, up to sivlal and uh, who was still married again call out to him siva oh siva just look at this mess this ghee has been spilled and wasted why are not uh, like why are not looking on such kind of things and you are meditating upon the form of bhagwan you should also uh, look after this activity this business also you are a householder then in this way his father meaning bhagadasi he was like calling uh, too much to sivlal and on the other hand sivlal was remain very calm and after uh, bhagadasi finished sivlal opened his eyes and commented father there is no need to be upset about it even after eating the ghee it should be ultimately wasted what's benefit of eating the ghee after 6 hours or after 8 hours or even after a day we can throw it out as a waste at least this way the wooden stairs will be greased and strengthened so that was a uh, sivlal bai's understanding like uh, this is the understanding or we can say the positive attitude even something happened wrong and still he found something good from that happening why because what's happen is happen no one can undo it then why should we like become upset after, now after scolding or after thinking or after becoming upset if we can regain that ghee or whatever wasted then that's beneficial for us but after discussing after wasting our time on thinking about that and becoming upset that's not worth so in this way sivlal bai's understanding was very like like that of a son and that's why we can say by association of gunanand and swami he received such kind of wisdom and in this way sivlal every day uh used to meditate upon the form of bhagwan for two and a half hours every day this is his daily routine and so once bhagadosi he was asking his son to uh, meaning sivlal to teach him the method of meditating upon the form of bhagwan then sivlal sivlal was ready to uh, explain the method of uh, meditating upon the form of bhagwan and he explained that uh, first i uh, realize in my mind like uh, i am nothing i am a uh, form of brahm and then i realize like this whole earth is not remain in his position meaning that i become a fire and become a ash not only that even i uh, uh, i burn out everything from my heart like nothing uh, here like not this uh, state not this country not this state not this city not this house and not only that even i burn out the farm from my heart all of our family members and every, everyone so after that i sitting uh, upon those ash of everything what burn out in my mind i sat upon that as and then i meditated upon bhagwan swaminarayan's divine form and then i can meditate upon bhagwan's form meaning he not physically burn out everything but in his mind through the thought process he 
did this meaning he realized that uh, nothing is permanent everything is perishable and everything even burned out meaning nothing is there in his mind and then he his mind focus on the form of bhagwan so he performed two and a half hour puja every day so he was like uh, very excel in meditating upon the form of bhagwan so every day maharaj even himself come to accept his devotion in person for form in his puja in his divine form and that's why many other like santo like ramanujanan swami and many other santo also every day came there for darshan of maharaj while sivlal was doing puja just as when our puja guru ji was here we are doing darshan of his puja why because maharaj himself come to his puja so that we should do darshan of guru ji's puja in the same way the santo was doing darshan in sivlal bai's puja why because bhagwan swami nar himself come to accept his devotion and uh now the same method also he taught to bagadosi by the grace of gunajdan and swami sivlal had developed the understanding that everything except god and his holy sadhu is perishable so sivlal was married but at a young age he became a widower and widower after becoming a widow when raghuvir ji maharaj told sivlal to remarry because bagadosi he was wealthy businessman and he was thinking uh like uh sivlal was become happy and that's why he requested even acharya maharaj even first he insisted uh sivlal to remarry but sivlal refused his request and that's why he told to uh, raghuvir ji maharaj so that uh, sivlal did not uh say no to raghuvir ji maharaj and uh did not refuse his request and that's why uh raghuvir ji maharaj told sivlal to remarry but he replied maharaj it is more appropriate for you to marry since you have no sons to inherit your position as acharya so seeing sivlal's firmness raghuvir ji maharaj did not praise him further and gunajdan swami also told sivlal's father don't force sivlal to remarry be patient for a few months sri ji maharaj will take care of everything and indeed it was the will of maharaj that prevailed meaning sivlal was serving the 116 year old swami and his name was bayatmanand swami So Bhayatmanam Swami was 116 year old and as his too old age and uh he was ill and so he required one person for uh service so Sivlal took this opportunity and he served Swami with appropriate food compatible with his ailing health and he even look after his medical needs and brought whatever medicines were necessary and even day and night sivlal served him not only that but even sivlal himself also served at bhayatman swami with uh, meaning in physical service he offer and day and night he passed his total time for serving a bhayatman swami even he washes his clothes even he washes swami's body in this way he took uh, he did uh, personal service to swami and then when swami would become extremely pleased upon sivlal because he also understood like this is a wealthy persons a wealthy businessman's son and that's why uh swami become please and he ask sivlal if you want to ask something from me then please ask i will grant it then sivlal says the opportunity and he said no swami i do not want anything then swami again ask him sivlal please ask something i really please upon you and there is nothing in this entire brahman entire universe that i cannot give it to you 
I'll give it to you, I promise. Then Sivlal thought in his mind and he requested while folding his hand, Swami, if you really please upon me, then give me one thing, give me a promise. Like when you go to Aksardam, take me with you. Then Swami was shocked to hear this. But he was aware about uh, Sivla's understanding and his spirituality. So he agreed, saying, Okay, Maharaj will fulfill your wish. Then, Bhayatman and Swami passed away to Akshardham in 1860. So, after his passing away, meaning after Swami's passing away, Sivla performed all the rituals and rites and everything. And on 13th day after passing away of Swami, he fed thousands of santos and devotees. And, after, and on the 14th day, he fell ill. Now, his father and the other family members, they also there. So, they took Sivlal to Botad. But after reaching Botad, Sivlal didn't go to his house. He go directly to Man, uh, Mandir. And he after reaching Mandir, he wanted to stay there. When Bhagadosi requested him, please come to house. You are not looking good. You are ill. So please come. Then Sivlal said, no, I am not... Uh, I'm not feeling good, so I want to stay here in Mandir. When I'll, I'll be okay, meaning when I'll be uh, feeling some good in my body, then I'll be back to house. Because that's only walking distance. There, Sivlal was like day and night, he was remembering Bhagwan's divine form and chanting Bhagwan's holy name. And finally, Maharaj also, on the 8th, uh, through, uh, for eight days, Sivlal uh, doing this uh, constant remembrance and chanting of Bhagwan's holy name. And on the eighth day, he spoke his last words to the devotees like, Maharaj has come to fetch me and I am going to Aksardam. Jai Swami and to all of you. So this is what last words of Sivlal said in the Mandir. And while staying in Mandir, he departed for Aksardam with Maharaj. Maharaj and Bhayatman and Swami came in his divine form and they brought uh, Sivlal's soul to Aksardam. So in this way, he had uh, like passed his totally devoted life. He had uh, not lived for any social or worldly affairs. He totally passed his life for the devotion and for satsang and for Maharaj. So this is all happened in Sivlal's life only because of association of a great son like Gopanan Swami and Gunatan Swami. So if we want to attain such kind of virtues in our life, then we should also. With understanding, like this is not a son, this is Bhagavan himself. With this firm understanding, if we associate with our Satpurus in the form of Puja Guruji, then we can also attain the same virtues like that of Sivlal Bhai said. And even though we are maybe a sadhu, maybe a devotee, maybe a wealthy, maybe not, whatever doesn't matter, but we will also acquire the same humbleness which Guruji many times said in his Katha, mostly every time say in his Katha to become a Das na Das. So we can also attain that virtue in our life by imbibing this uh, method which uh, we can get from Sivlal Bhai's life. So let me pray to the feet of this divine mukt of Akshardham meaning to Sivlal Bhai's feet like uh, by listening, by reading, by explaining something about his life he would become pleased upon us and because of that he can grant us the same virtues of understanding Sadguru as a Bhagwan. By saying this, 
जय स्वामीनारायण श्री घनश्याम महाराज जय श्रीपतिम श्रीधरम सर्वेश्वर भक्तिधर आत्मज वासुदेव हरे माधव केशव कामद कारण स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भजे श्री घनश्याम महाराज जय